welcome to the first of many different Magic the Gathering deck builds you can find here on Ready Comics Roll. So if you enjoy some of the deck builds that you see along with some of the other videos, be sure to like, share, and subscribe as we have a lot more coming. And there's going to be a wide variety of deck builds you're going to be able to find on this channel, such as a Legacy, Modern, Popper, and so on. And what I'm going to be showing you today is a slightly unorthodox kind of Legacy build involving mirrors. And the reason why I say unorthodox is because unlike most Legacy decks, which are usually like two to three round wins, or at least that's what most people shoot for, uh, there's going to be a little bit of build up to kind of really sink that win. But once you do get there, there's several different win conditions that you can go ahead and savor that sweet sweet victory and the look of absolute shock and awe as the person is just completely overwhelmed by this mere madness. And although we don't have the resources, time, and skill to go ahead and create these deck build review videos like some of these other channels that are filled with special effects, we do have one thing those other channels don't have. Me. <laughs> Alright, before we get into the really good stuff with some of the combos and fun things that this deck can actually do, it's of course important to know what cards you're going to need to kind of construct this Mirror Madness deck. One of the first things you'll notice with this deck is I don't have any basic lands. Everything here is artifact lands, which is why at maximum you can only have four non-basic lands of a given type. And artifact lands themselves are kind of a double-edged sword. They could really come in handy for some certain things that the de this deck is capable of, and I'll go over here in just a little bit. But on the flip side, if you're playing against somebody who is running kind of like a more of an artifact hate deck, or just something that can really answer against artifacts and has other, you know, spells that are instants that can deal with those, since they are more than just, you know, standard lands, then you're going to be in trouble. But you're going to have four Ancient Dens, and that's going to go ahead and cover your Plains mana. You're going to have two Great Furnaces, and that's going to cover your uh, Mountain's uh, mana. You're going to go ahead and have four Seed of the Synod, that's going to cover your Island's mana. You're going to have four Dark Steel, uh, Dark Steel Citadel. And the beauty of these things is, like I mentioned before, against artifact uh, decks or just anything else that can potentially destroy or get rid of them, Dark Steel Citadel, each one of these is indestructible, and they produce one colorless mana. So it's going to be a lot harder to get rid of these, other than if somebody has something that forces you to sacrifice a permanent that's in play. And then last but not least, you have four of the Vault of Whispers, which produces uh, swamp mana. But these artifact lands aren't the only way to produce mana. For anybody who knows how most mirror decks work, or just mirrors in general, there's often going to be mirrors that produce mana themselves. For instance, you have the Palladium Mirror, which for three colorless mana is a 2-2 that when you tap produces two mana to your mana pool. That can be very helpful for a myriad of different reasons. And I try to stick to just three of those because I really don't need much more than that. Uh, I kind of need room for some other uh, mirror based cards. For instance, like these two mirror turbines. Now the beauty of this artifact is when you go ahead and tap it, you can put a 1-1 colorless mirror artifact creature out onto the battlefield. But then if you tap the mirror turbine and tap five untapped mirrors you control, you can search your library for a mirror creature card and put it into the battlefield and shuffle your library. Which again, I'll show you why that's going to be uh, uh, pretty nice later on. From there, you have two Leyline of Anticipation. And if Leyline of Anticipation is in your opening hand, you can actually begin the game with it on the battlefield without even having to cast it. Uh, but once you put it into effect, it's an enchantment that you may cast non-land cards as though they had flash. So basically, every turn is your turn and you can cast anything as an instant. But adding to the Mirror ranks is one of the more powerful mirrors, the Mirror Superion, which for only two colorless mana gets you a 5-6 creature. Uh, it does come at a catch though, the only way that you can cast these, even though it's a, just a cheap cost of two colorless, is you can only spend mana produced by creatures to cast Mirror Superion. Uh, but I've countless games of, I've played never ran to a situation where I didn't have enough mana to cast one of these bad boys, especially if there's already a Palladium Mirror out on the field which produces two colorless mana when you cast it. And like I mentioned before, and the whole concept behind this whole mirror deck is when people think mirrors, they think of these like really weak 1-1 one, one artifact creatures, and it's like, oh, that's cute, what are you going to do, tickle me to death? So, I mean, the whole idea with some of the stuff as far as building them up is, for instance, this enchantment right here, you have Tempered Steel. So artifact creatures you control get plus two, plus two. So those 1-1 one, one little mirrors now become three threes and then some. 
But you don't need too many. I mean, even just having one of these enchantments out in the field is bad enough. If you can actually manage to get two, uh, your opponent's in for a bad time. Now the Mere Battle Sphere. This is a nasty piece of work. I, it's seven colorless to cast, but one of the ways you can get around that would be the Mere Turbine we talked about before. Uh, but for a 4-7 creature, when Mere Battle Sphere enters the batter, battlefield, you put four 1-1 one, one colorless Mere Artifact creature tokens onto the battlefield. And this is where it gets real fun. Whenever Mirror, mirror Battle Sphere attacks, you may tap X untap Mirror I control, or you control. If you do, Mirror Battle Sphere gets plus X to its uh, attack, plus zero to its toughness until end of turn, and it deals X damage to the defending player. So it's pretty much a hand cannon on top of being a very potentially powerful attacking creature. But you really only need about two of those. And then you have two of Unwinding Clock for for colorless mana, what it allows you to do is you can untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. And then you have Mirror Reservoir. Now the thing with Mirror Reservoir as an artifact card, when you tap it, you can go ahead and add two, of your, uh, two colors to your mana pool. You can spend this mana to only cast mirror spells or activate abilities of mirrors. Uh, the problem is this does not, and I've looked it up just to be sure, does not work in as far as creating the Mirror Superion. The reason for that being is the fact that this is not a creature, this is an artifact which this specifically mentions that you need to, it can only be cast with mana produced by creatures. Uh, but what's good about this is then for three colorless mana and then tapping it, you can return a target mirror card from your graveyard to your hand. So if you lose out on a mirror superior or let's say you go ahead and lose out on your mirror battle sphere, you can bring them back into your hand and hopefully get them back uh, out on the battlefield relatively soon. Mirror Servitor is a nice little utility creature to have because it's only one colorless to cast and it's a 1-1 one, one mirror artifact creature, but what makes it really good in the long run is the fact that at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have a Mirror Servitor in play, uh, each player returns all cards named Mirror Servitor from his or her graveyard to play. So if I have three of these Mirror Servitors in my graveyard, it's now my upkeep, and I have uh, one Mirror Servitor out there, it's going to bring those three right back into play, which, you know, t uh, combined with, like, Tempered Steel or just other things going around, can really produce... A, a serious threat in a matter of uh, seconds for your opponent. Continuing some of the fun, we have the Lodestone Mirror, which only costs four colorless two cast. Now, the beauty of this mirror is it is, even though it's a two, only a two two, it does have trample, and you can go ahead and tap an untapped artifact you control to go ahead and give mirror plus uh, mirror Lodestone Mirror plus one plus one until end of turn. Now Hover Mirror was something I kind of added at the last second, and the reason why I did so is often when I'm creating these kind of uh, tribal swarm style decks, I usually end up coming across an opponent that has flying, and I rarely, because the way these decks are kind of built, have an answer for that, other than like the, the instance or sorceries to either counter or destroy. So with Hover Mirror, at least what I have is a 1-2 Flyer with Vigilance for only 2 colorless. Not a bad card to have, especially for the price. Now here, <laughs> Scour Glass is kind of your nuke card and will more than likely end up making whoever you play against very angry. The reason being is, for the 2 planes, 3 colorless, this artifact, the way it works, is you can go ahead and tap and then sacrifice Scour Glass. And what it does is it destroys all permanents except for artifacts and lands. Um, and it, the, the trick is though you can only play this ability during your upkeep. But as you've seen so far, everything in this deck is practically an artifact or land. So it's a great way to board wipe your opponent without board wiping yourself. And again, some very simple mirrors to get out there. Um, but they are, the whole point of them is to go ahead and produce that mana not including like enchantments or other ways of beefing them up. So for two colorless, you get a 1-1 one, one mirror that when you tap it produces more island mana. And then on top of that, you have two mirror galvanizers. And the way they kind of work is once they come into play, uh, it's their three colorless to cast for 2-2. Two, two. But other mirror creatures you control get plus 1-1. One, one. So again, that's another way of kind of beefing up your ranks kind of making what was once a very weak and meager artifact creature into something a little bit more beefy, especially combined with other things. But the real treat here, and this actually led to an infinite combo I'll go into here in just a little bit, which I'm pretty sure has been banned or needs to be banned even in Legacy, is when you pay one Carlos and tap Mirror Galvanizer, you can untap each other mirror you control. So with the two of these, uh, <laughs> 
yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll get into that. You'll see. But then you have the gold mirror. Again, a, a very simple kind of mirror setup for two colorless. You get a 1-1 one, one mirror. With this one, when you tap it, you go ahead and add a planes to your mana pool. For anyone who is played against or runs an artifact deck, you're all familiar with cranial plating and just what it is capable of. But just to go over it, it's only two colorless to cast, and uh, it's an equipment card, so an equipped creature gets plus one to its attack for each artifact you control. Again, just about everything in this deck, including the lands, is artifacts. So even from the get-go, you're, you're already going to have a very heavy hitter. Uh, and then for two uh, Swamp, you can go ahead and, as an instant, kind of attach cranial plating to a target creature you control. And then to equip is uh, just one. Colorless. Of course, to equip is treated as a sorcery, but just remember, uh, that's that a little ability right there for the two Swamp, that can be done as, as an instant. In getting to about the end here, you have for one Plains mana, the Argivian Find, and what you have this for is to go ahead and return a target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Again, considering that just about everything in here is an artifact, uh, there is a, a, a few enchantments, that's why that card's good because it, it just kind of brings back anything that you might need that uh, got taken care of a little bit sooner than you wanted to by your opponent. And then of course, disenchantment is what your way of answering back to some nasty things that your opponent might have in the works. What it does is for one colorless and one's planes, you can go ahead and destroy a target artifact or enchantment. So if you have something that's kind of tripping you up or keeping you from doing what you need to do, that's your way of kind of answering back. So one of the combinations I kind of want to discuss about is uh, Unwinding Clock and Leyline of Anticipation work very well with one another. As I mentioned before, with Leyline of Anticipation, you can go ahead and cast non-land cards as though they had flash, which means they are basically treated as instants. And then on Winding Clock, um, you can go ahead and untap all artifact cards you control during each other player's untapped step. Uh, so Unwinding Clock is actually going to combo for a lot of things, so you're going to see this come up quite a few times. The reason why that's great is, okay, let's go ahead and say I want to go ahead and tap to cast Lodestone Mirror on my turn. I'm going to go ahead and why not also go ahead and spend two. Let's go ahead and cast Hover Mirror. All right, then I go to pass on to the next person's turn. Oh, wait, look at that. I go ahead and untap my land. Oh, hey, what's, well, you know, it's your turn too. Huh, you know, why not? I'm gonna go ahead and just cast another creature card on your turn, because your turn is now basically my turn, thanks to Leyline of Anticipation. So it's kind of just like, well, crap, when somebody else is playing against you, because then uh, you're just playing cards whenever you want to. You can pretty much do whatever you want to whenever. And the fact that you have Unwinding Clock, especially when you're in a multiplayer match, uh, it really just provides ample opportunity to get that artifact lands untapped, have that mana available, and continue doing whatever it is that you really want to do. But while we have Lodestone Mirror out here, so as we mentioned before, with Lodestone Mirror, when you tapped an un untapped artifact you control, Lodestone Mirror gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. So again, <laughs> when you're looking at the artifact lands, they are also artifacts. So if you don't need those mana, let's say you already have more enough mana, you have all these creatures you want, really don't need any more, or you're just really close enough to where if you trample just right, you're gonna take out your opponent, go ahead and tap. Oh, look at that, that's now four, four, six, six. And you can kind of continue on, but the idea is you're gonna create this massive trampling monster out of Lodestone Mirror. All right, and as I mentioned, cranial plating before, again, a lot of people are already familiar with how this works. So a crypt creature gets plus one to attack for every artifact that's out in play. So I mean, right off the bat, you're already talking in this scenario, that's one, two, three, four, five, because it includes itself, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It's a plus 17. Now for the point of this example, because this thing's trample, and it's pretty much gonna be bad for anything that's blocking it, We'll go ahead and say this uh, Soulless one, the way it works, and this is from Dead Rising deck, which I'm going to have fun showing later. Uh, its attack and toughness is equal to the amount of zombies that are uh, out in play and in all graveyards. So let's go ahead and say he's a, he's a, like a 25-25. Let's say that we're pretty deep into this game. So he's going to be able to block whatever, sure. Grave Titan 6-6, which is still going to be a threat to any one of these. So... 
I'm declaring ta attackers with uh, both these lodestone mirrors and the mirror servitor. So it's like, okay, well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and of course, like I said, this uh, say that's 25, 25. Uh, this person's not going to want to take that uh, additional damage anyways for the potential of trample because nothing else is going to be able to kind of block. So that blocker is declared. All right, this blocker is declared. Then this blocker is declared. What that you can then do is again, because this is an instant, that's the ability that the uh, cranial plating has for two swamp. I can go ahead and transfer this over to this one. So as we mentioned before, that was 17. You're adding 17 to two. That's now a 19 two. Uh, and that's going to be trampling over that only six, six grave Titan. Now, granted, it's probably not the best example or scenario, but the idea is just kind of show you that you can transfer the cranial plating to whoever is better suited for the scenario. That's really what you're kind of going for, because that's still going to be really nasty. And once blockers are declared, can be quite a surprise to your opponent. So we mentioned Mirror Turbine before, and what's great about it is you can tap it to put a 1-1 one, one colorless Mirror Artifact creature token onto the battlefield. So you tap it, put out the 1, but oh hey, wait a minute, remember Unwinding Clock? So when you go to another player's turn, it's like, okay, well, it's untapped. Okay, let me go ahead and tap it again, and another one, and another one. And you get to be DJ Khaled with mirrors, and another one. And you kind of continue this on, or until you get again those five that you need, go ahead and tap this. Go ahead and search your library for, you guessed it, the Mirror Battle Sphere. So it's just gonna pour even more mirrors onto the battlefield. Then of course, let's say you have more mirrors than you already know what to do with. As we talked about before, the whole thing with uh, Mirror Battle Sphere. Just keep piling them on because there's just so many. The way it works is you can go ahead and tap all of these. I'm not gonna go through the trouble of tapping them all. And it's gonna add to that attack, but then again, it does that direct damage to the defending player. Uh, regardless of whether it's blocked or not, they're still going to be taking that damage on top of any other potential damage that may be dealt. But that's what makes the Mirror Galvanizer particularly dangerous, because then I can go ahead and tap all these to beef up Mirror Battlesphere, except for Mirror Galvanizer, go ahead and pay the one colorless, uh, tap it, and then guess what? All those other mirror mirrors are untapped. And then if I really want to be a jerk, I can go ahead and continue that again, and tap them all again to further beef up Mirror Battle Sphere, or again, as we spoke about before, uh, Lodestone Mirror, because those are all artifacts, tap all those, beef up Lodestone Mirror to be a really beefy trampler, and then use the Mirror Galvanizer to go ahead and untap those, tap them all again, it just gets a little bit on the ridiculous side. Mirror Galvanizer is one monster of a mirror for what it can do for you. So as I kind of alluded to this before, but really going in depth in this, uh, besides what you just saw with your Mirror Galvanizer, if you have two of them in play, eh, you kind of run into an infinite loop of one of two things. Either an infinite loop of being able to tap mirrors to go ahead and beef up Mirror Lodestone, uh, Lodestone Mirror or Mirror Battle Sphere, or you have potentially infinite mana, because then when you go ahead and tap the Silver Mirror, uh, or any of the mirrors, let's say, I had, let's say like most of these were just mana generating mirrors, I'm going to have more enough mana to pay to go ahead and do this because it's only one mana and then tap and you untap other mirrors. So you're untapping the mirrors that generate that mana and it just goes on and on and on. So you could potentially generate an infinite amount of mana. Or again, you can go ahead and use it to be a real jerk and just keep tapping pretty much forever until you beef up your lodestone mirror to a ridiculous amount of damage or mirror battle sphere for that same purpose. It's just not pretty. And again, I'm pretty sure at least in legacy, uh, this is probably banned or most people will frown upon you, you playing this at least if you play it in that way I try never to use the infinite combo I think I only did it once just to show somebody the ridiculousness of it and also of course for this video to explain that as well and that's going to do it for this deck review kind of build of my mere madness legacy deck I uh, Hope you had as much fun with it as I have. If you want to build it, you want to play test it and see how it turns out for you, definitely know. let me know how it worked out for you or what you think of it down in the comments below. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, same as I said before, make sure to like, share, and subscribe because we've got plenty more deck build videos and a lot of other just great content here on Ready Comics Roll. 
Uh, but this was a lot of fun. I can't wait to show other ones, just like I, I mentioned the whole uh, Dead Rising zombie deck. Um, but this is probably one of the ones I'm most proud of, or I enjoy playing the most, because again, I really love uh, artifact creature decks, or just artifact decks. And just again, taking a mirror, something that just seems so meager and non-threatening, and just being able to pull that off with this is just uh, too much fun. And really, if there's any kind of combos that I really didn't consider or anything that kind of just really struck you that I may have missed, also go ahead and mention that down in the comments below. I would love to hear it. And then, of course, be sure to check out our podcast. You can find us on Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, and uh, just about anything, any place you can go to to listen to podcasts, you can find us on there. We talk about a lot of the, you know, geeky stuff that we all love. Um, follow us on Twitch. We do a lot of random live streams throughout the week. Carlos and I actually do stream Magic the Gathering Arena from time to time, so that might be fun for you all to watch as well. And if you really want to help us grow, head over to our Patreon and become a patron today.